you want to get into the head of someone who just through hiked or tried to through hike the Pacific Crest Trail, this is the video for you. Make sure you keep watching. Today I am going to be doing a Q&A video. I put a post on my community tab asking my subscribers if they had any questions about my PCT through hike attempt. We got a bunch of good questions because as I've said many times, I have the best subscribers on YouTube, which is why you should join that crew of subscribers if you haven't already. Just real quick for those of you that are new to the channel, I attempted to through hike the PCT this year, 2022. I started on May 15th. I hiked until September 10th. I hiked about 2,189 miles of the trail. I didn't quite get the whole thing. I have a whole video about what happened, so you can go watch that. It's right here if you're not familiar. All right, let's get on to the question. Shelby Hemp has a whole freaking pile of questions here, dude. I'm just gonna go rapid fire through these real quick. What was your favorite meal to eat on trail? Uh, Annie's Mac and Cheese. What was your favorite town that you stopped in? South Lake Tahoe. Did you always resupply food in town or did you have boxes shipped to you? Mostly just stopped at grocery stores along the way. I try to avoid resupply supply boxes as much as I can. However, there was two that I ended up doing in Washington, one at White's Pass, I think, and another one at Snoqualmie Pass. Do you have a favorite section of the trail? Probably Southern Washington, honestly, all of Washington, the parts that I did anyways, was probably my favorite. How does the PCT compare to the AT in overall difficulty? I'm not gonna answer that because I'm gonna have a freaking whole video, probably multiple videos comparing the PCT to the AT coming out shortly. Also. I just realized I'm wearing an Appalachian Trail shirt in a video about the PCT. We can't have that. All right, on to the next question. Which camp chair did you use and which Dan Becker videos did you watch to prepare? <laughs> Nothing's changed around here apparently. How was the difference in resupply for the PCT versus the AT? Did you have more boxes mailed? What was the availability of you needed goods? Average number of days between carries? Resupply was one of the biggest differences between the AT and the PCT, honestly. Resupply was way harder. Every single time I would be hitchhiking and one of the people that was driving us would ask me, like, oh, have you done the, like, have you done this before? And I'd be like, oh yeah, I did the AT. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, like, what, compare them. I'm making fun of the question. It's a great question. And honestly, I'm going to do, like I said, lots of videos comparing the two trails. But just real quick, the first thing I would always tell people when they asked about the differences between the two trails was the resupply. It was way freaking harder on the PCT. You are going longer stretches in general. Of course, it varies. But in general, longer stretches between towns, more miles you have to hike between resupplies, which means you're carrying more days worth of food. I did have to send a couple boxes to a few spots. The logistics and the resupply was definitely much harder on the PCT. God damn it. What was some of your biggest screw ups? And that's for a Moby dickhead. <laughs> The only like major screw up I can think of other than trying to hike the PCT in the first place <laughs> is when Flossie and I hiked the section from Kennedy Meadow, Ken Kennedy, ah, f I dated a girl named Kennedy. I should know how to say this. Kennedy Meadows South. When Flossie and I hiked from Kennedy, <laughs> the section from Kennedy Meadows South to Kearsarge Pass, uh, that's also the section where we hiked Mount Whitney. I up how many days worth of food we needed to bring. It's the only time I've ever done this on any through hike. I'm usually like super good. We didn't like completely run out of food, but we definitely had to ration our food for like a day and a half, which sucked. We're gonna be rationing our food these next few days, like no doubt. I don't think I've ever been this low on food before. Was the desert stretch of the trail harder than the parts with the most elevation gain? And that was from Danky Greens. <laughs> Usernames are the best thing about the internet. Uh, the desert section, was harder in some aspects and also easier in some aspects. The actual like climbing part of it, as you kind of touched on in the question there, of course, there's always a couple steep spots every now and then, but for the most part, the climbs were pretty gradual. The hard part was obviously the heat and the exposure because I left so late leaving in mid-May on the PCT. Yeah, we had some really hot days, obviously. Overall, under optimal conditions, I would say the desert part is probably easier than the part with the elevation gain, but it's also not as much fun and not as pretty, and a lot drier, just like your mom. Speaking of the desert, Teresa said, I know you can prepare, but how shocking was the desert temps day to night and the sight of the Sierra Nevadas, was it overwhelming? Two great questions there. I think what, what they're referring to there is like the difference between the temperature, like during the day it's really hot, at night can be pretty cold, which was a little bit shocking. I was not used to that. I figured the desert was gonna be hot all the time. I got there and it was hot most of the time, but sometimes at night it got cold and I shivered. 
like a little bitch. The sight of the Sierra Nevada freaking mountains, it was very overwhelming and 100% the camera did not do it justice. And I'll just say the first time that we ever saw the Sierras off in the distance at the very end of the desert, so like we weren't there yet, that was one of the most amazing feelings of the entire hike, honestly, looking back on it, because we had been working so hard and making it out of the desert and making it to the Sierra was honestly probably like the biggest sense of accomplishment I felt on the whole trail because we ended up not finishing and also not even being able to cross into Oregon because of fires. And so making it out of the desert, seeing the Sierras off in the distance for the first time, that was an amazing sight, an amazing feeling. I got goosebumps when I walked Dude. up over this and saw this. Me I was too. Like, Me yes. too. We're glowing. <laughs> We're glowing, hell yeah. I've got a great question here from Narrator. Did filming the trail become a burden or hinder your experience in any way? Um, this is something that I was very, not afraid of, but very conscious of before the PCT. And honestly, before I even started this channel, just in general, when it comes to making videos, I've always tried to make it as much fun as possible. I really don't want it to ever feel like a job. Very, very intentional about how I run this channel. But on the PCT, honestly, and I'm not bullshitting you, it never really felt like a burden. It did hinder a few things in certain ways, but nothing major. It never ever felt like I was forcing it or I had to do it. The ways that it did hinder, honestly, the biggest one is just carrying the camera, like not even filming it, but just like carrying the camera. It was starting to hurt my chest right here and my back and my shoulder up there by the end of the trail. It took 1700 miles before that started to happen, but probably not very good to be carrying extra weight on one side of your body constantly like that. When we were in town, there was a lot of the time where I just wanted to relax and, you know, chill and take a day off from hiking and filming and just like rest my body and my mind and that's honestly why there's very little footage of our time in town and so sometimes dealing with like the uploading of the footage and editing photos and like communicating with Luke just like the behind the scenes stuff when I was in town that was a little bit of a hindrance but for the most part I think that the videos had an overwhelmingly positive impact on the hike. And by the way, if you're not subscribed yet, dude, let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. I sound like an idiot saying that because I'm not even at like 40,000, but that's my goal. It's ambitious. If and when this channel gets to 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna flip a coin. And if that coin lands on heads, I will go backpacking with a camp chair. I can't believe I just said that. Taylor, she said, if you had to repeat a trail, would it be the AT or the PCT? I don't really wanna repeat either one of them, to be honest, but I guess the question said, if you had to, and if that was the case, I would probably choose the AT. I'm sorry. Holes of Destiny said, on nights y'all weren't too tired from doing big miles. <laughs> I don't know, what would y'all do for fun around camp? That's definitely how Poles of Destiny talks, right? What would we do for fun around camp, dude? The zip chip, that is the first thing that comes to mind. Some of you might recall seeing this in the videos. Brandon, the guy that we started hiking with after you know a couple weeks on the PCT, kind of randomly, he had a zip chip, which is like a tiny little Frisbee it's lightweight, it's perfect for like backpacking. It's just rubber, so like you can throw it around and if it hits trees and stuff, you're not gonna break it. Like we would try to like set up little obstacle courses and like pass to each other around trees and through like bushes and stuff. We never lost it somehow, but I could see if you're like getting a little reckless with it, you could throw it somewhere, lose it, and you don't wanna, you know, you leave no trace, you know, and plus you don't wanna lose your zip chip. Those things are freaking awesome. I'd never heard of it before Brandon brought his, and so link to it in the description. Definitely the best like toy, ultralight backpacking thing. It, it doesn't weigh anything. Do you still feel like you quit? I don't think anyone else does. It still does feel like I quit, but after posting that video, after reading your comments, and after just reflecting these past few weeks, it doesn't really feel like I quit as much. I think technically I still quit, like for sure, but it doesn't really feel like it as much anymore because I'm starting to think about the fact that I'm still gonna go back and finish the PCT. So it doesn't really feel like I quit. It's not like I'm never gonna go back and hike those miles. It kind of feels like I'm just putting it on pause for the moment and I'll be back out there as soon as I can. But comment below if you think I'm a big wuss for quitting the PCT. <laughs> Blaine Paul Bunyan. <laughs> what did you do on trail that you are most proud of? What did you do on trail that you are least proud of? I know what I did that I'm least proud of. There was a guy, another thru hiker, 
who recognized me one time from YouTube. We were chilling on top of a pass in the Sierras. He was up there already before I showed up. And so I showed up, I sat down, there was a bunch of other people up there too. I was sitting there for maybe like 15 minutes and I could kind of notice him just like, not like staring at me like not creepy at all. I just noticed him kind of like looking at me maybe a little bit more than a normal person would. I just kind of thought like, oh, maybe he recognizes me from YouTube, like that happens before, but it was totally fine. Like it was not creepy, weird vibes at all. I didn't really think that much of it. I chilled up there for a while. There were some other through hikers. There was probably a group of like five or six of us talking. And then he came over and he was like, hey, like, are you Kyle hates hiking? And I was like, yeah, he's like, oh cool. Like I watch your videos or whatever. And then I said something really, really stupid and just made a fool of myself, honestly, and kind of embarrassed him too. I said like, I thought I saw you like eyeing me up over there. And like, I don't know why I said this. He got really awkward and walked away pretty much as soon as I said that. And I think the way that I said it, it made it sound like it was like kind of creepy of him or kind of weird of him to do it. But I, that's not how it was. I don't know why I said that. It was it was really stupid. I felt really bad. He started hiking shortly afterwards and I caught up to him, you know, maybe like half an hour later and I apologized to him. And I said, listen, man, that was not cool of me. I don't know why I did that. I felt like an idiot. So if you're watching this guy, I don't remember his name. I remember he was from Canada. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. And then the thing I'm the most proud of 100% is the freaking videos that we made out there, dude. I could not have asked for these videos to come together better. Luke obviously did an amazing job. Flossie and Brandon were so good on camera. And I think I did a pretty good job of pacing the videos as well. I'm gonna go take a sh I'm telling you, like, I am so proud of how the videos came out. I'm s I feel so grateful that they came out the way they did. Um, and I'm so grateful that you guys watched. Uh, even those of you that also watch Dan Becker, 